Hey guys, Jared here, Magnetic Men's Club. Hope you're doing well. Today's video is going to be a little different. I have a friend of mine who messaged me on Facebook. He lives in Belize. I've never actually met him, but we interact quite often. He's 29 years old, so he's literally 20 years younger than me. And he actually used to be one of my um, phone setters for another company of mine. And I'm actually probably going to be bringing him back uh, pretty soon or talking to him about an opportunity to do some side work for me. Now, I'm going to give you some context. He's 29 years old, but the guy's brilliant. He speaks like four languages, um, very good with computers, very good with people. He just happens to be in, a, in an economy like Belize. It's a beautiful country, but there's not a lot of opportunities there. And so he found a way to network with a lot of coaches, with other people, so that he can do work remotely to kind of supplement what he does um, for his main income in Belize. So he sent me a message. <clears throat> I was on my Facebook Live last week with Chase, and we were talking about masculinity, what it means to be a man and all that stuff. And he sent me a Facebook message and he basically asked me, I'm gonna kind of paraphrase, he's struggling with alcoholism, going out, going out with women, paying for their meals, paying for a good time, and basically getting drunk and making some very bad decisions. He's 29 and he has this thought that he should be further along in life by now. And I think we've all had that thought um, at some point or another. I do a lot of coaching with women, believe it or not, and they use a lot of words like should. I should be married by now. I should have kids. And these are old rules that keep coming up. And so I start seeing some old rules come up for him. I should be further along. I should be doing this. My income should be that. But alcoholism is getting in the way. Now I'm not a doctor and so I can't diagnose him obviously if he does have alcoholism or if he's just in a season of his life right now where maybe he's abusing alcohol. It's a big difference. So I don't know. My thought would be He's just confused on another part of his message. He had an LTR. That ex told him recently that she found somebody else and is moving on. So my thought is that he got this information and he did what a lot of men do. They self-sabotage. They go into poor me mode and they go out and party and they try to get their dick wet. They just try to party. And what happens is without self-awareness, because my friend is very self-aware of what he's doing, but without self-awareness, the abuse of alcohol can turn into an addiction. I had problems in the military with alcohol and really Probably early on in my marriage, I was still very young and I definitely had a problem with alcohol. I abused alcohol all in the military and in the beginning of my marriage until I started becoming self-aware, until I started realizing that for me, I had a lot more responsibilities and honestly duty. I had a duty to my wife now, I have a duty to my two children, uh, the duty to my business, my business partners, all of that stuff. So Eddie's 29, he has some kids, but he doesn't really have much else going on, or he thinks he doesn't have much else going on. And of course he does, he still has his health, he's still very intelligent, he has a lot of opportunity for growth. So he does have a lot going on, but he's in a season of his life where he, <clears throat> got some bad information bad news from his ex or painful news from his ex and I think what's going on is he's using that as an excuse to go out and party blow it on women blow it on booze and then you wake up the next morning and you have no more money and so he's living paycheck to paycheck 
We've all done that. My father, I've talked about this in other videos, he's still alive, he is a functioning alcoholic. And so I've been around alcoholism. His entire family, his entire side of the family, I love them all, but most of them have some type of an addiction to alcohol, whether they're full-blown alcoholics, weekend alcoholics. I'm not even sure if you can characterize, I think maybe an alcoholic is an alcoholic. I don't really know, but my point is, a lot of them, most of them have problems with alcohol. And my mom used to hammer that home when I was younger. She says, listen, it is in your blood. Um, your abuse can turn into an addiction. And I firmly believe that. So the advice I first gave my friend was, yeah, I, I, don't, I don't necessarily think you're an alcoholic, but I definitely think you're abusing alcohol and it can go down that rabbit hole very quickly if you're not recognizing those patterns. And thank God, because he is smart, he does recognize these patterns and he's reaching out. So my advice to him would be like, get around like AA. Just because you're not diagnosed an alcoholic doesn't mean you can't go to AA. And a lot of people think AA is just a bunch of men and women whining about their circumstances. Some of the people have been sober for 20 years and they continue to go to AA because they're still around like-minded people who are still battling demons. And for the most part, it's a very positive group. So what does that teach you? The same thing you teach in the Magnetic Men Club. You want to be around positive people. You want to be around like-minded people. You want to be around people who are either trying to stop something in their life or start something in their life. And so AA helps you stay accountable, doing the 12-step program, getting a sponsor, helping other people who are getting into the program. So I suggested to him, you, you need to find some type of group like that. Because you're aware, because you know that you're wasting your money and you're wasting your resources and you're wasting your youth and your time on alcoholism, you need to now find a compensating interest that you want to do more than drink and party. That kind of goes in line with people who know they need to go to the gym, they're overweight, people who know they need to do something in their life or they want to do something in life but they never do it. It's because they don't have something more they want to do. There's not enough of there's not enough pain in their life to make that shift to actually do something in a positive direction for their life. So he's got to look for that. And sadly, if he doesn't have that, it's, I don't want to say it's okay, but if you don't have it yet, you need to start looking for it and finding something that you want to do more. And it's usually not finding a girlfriend. It's, it's usually finding not even a passion. I don't really like the word passion, but a calling. What is it that you want to do? What is it that you want to do that you will do anything you possibly can to achieve that goal or that thing. He's not looking to be a multi-millionaire. He just wants to be set and have enough income for him and his kids and eventually the woman of his dreams comes in and they have a family. I don't necessarily think he's looking to be, you know, Donald Trump or anything like that. But he definitely needs to up his income. So that could be something that he can start striving for, taking on other gigs, as, as he calls it, in the coaching space and the phone setter space and, and all of that stuff. I'm not going to get too much into what he does, but taking on more of that. That can definitely eat up some of his time in a positive direction and get him away from the bars. The second or the third thing now I said to do is because he's slacking in the gym. You definitely need to get that energy out, that frustration out. Um, you need to focus your time and your attention under some weights. 200 pounds is 200 pounds. It never lies to you. 200 pounds never will cheat on you. 200 pounds will never blow your money. 200 pounds will humble you. 
very quickly if you've never lifted 200 pounds. So I always advocate more, more, more get into the gym. You can never go wrong getting into the gym in anything in your life. So get around like-minded people. Again, maybe an AA meeting, maybe just a group that we have, Magnetic Men Club, the link's down below. It's a free Facebook group along with some other things that you can take, the wheel of life, brand new, it's sort of like a test, can see what area of your life you're struggling in the most. We also have a core values to, uh, quiz. Again, the link is down below. Answer about 13 to 15 questions, and it will give you what your core values are, because a lot of people don't know what their operating system is, and your operating system is run off of your core values. So I invite you to, to go to all of these free resources, but getting into a group of like-minded people is also going to change your perspective. So his perspective is pretty low. He's viewing himself as a loser. He's viewing himself as a guy who should be going further in his life. He's viewing himself as a guy who is failing in his life. And if we can shift his perspective and say, yeah, in this season of your life, maybe you're losing, but life is the long game. In the long game, what can we start doing now? What can we start changing now to shift that perspective into saying, I am fearfully and wonderfully made by God. I've lost my way, but I'm on the right path now. And I'm willing to do the things I need to do to be the man or woman I know I can be. And that's what I wanna work with my friend on. The key is alcoholism in and of itself is probably one of the most dangerous next to porn addiction, but alcoholism, because I have so much knowledge and I've had so much experience with alcoholism, all bad. I've never experienced an alcoholic that is doing very, very well in life. Never have. They might be doing very well in business. I'm sure there's highly successful alcoholics, but everything else in their life is probably really bad. Shallow relationships, I, I would have to assume, or non-existent relationships. And so the part of the Magnetic Men Club is we want to balance out that circle of life. We want to take those areas that you are struggling in and sort of take that circle and make it more of a perfect circle. Is it ever going to be perfect? No. Can it be better? Absolutely. That's the advice I gave him. That's the advice I thought maybe we can do a video on because, like I said, a lot of people, especially the younger crowd, um, probably struggle with alcoholism because it's so easy to get. The access is easy. Once you hit 21, I mean, it's it's kind of like a no big deal. But it does, and it can, and it will become a big deal if you don't recognize the patterns that you're doing. If you're using alcoholism as a coping mechanism, a good coping mechanism or a bad coping mechanism leads to the same slaughterhouse. To have a couple drinks and you can control it, then this video isn't for you. This is This video is for the men and women out there who start realizing, yeah, I really can't control it. When I have one, it's it's 10. Or I maybe have three or four a night. You take that out for seven, you know, seven days a week, four times seven, that's 28 drinks a week. That's, that's a lot, right? I don't want to see that happen to you. I love my father. He is a great man but he has definitely ruined his life with alcoholism. That's all I got on this. My name is Jared Schumacher. This is the Magnetic Men's Club. If you're struggling in this area, I can lead you in the right direction. You, you need a good therapist. If you found this video helpful, please hit like, leave me a comment, consider subscribing to the channel. Obviously, you know it helps the algorithm and that bell icon so you know when new videos are being dropped. With that, have an amazing day, and we will talk soon. Bye.